And then one of our students, um, my friend Sam, Sam Grupo, he brought in a video that he had seen, I think he was watching with his parents, about sleeping sickness. And in the video it talked about how there was this horrible disease in Africa um, that was killing a lot of people, but the amount of people it was killing wasn't as high as a lot of other diseases, but what was kind of worse about it was that a lot of people, they were still alive, but they had really low quality of life. So a lot of people would get the disease, and then some of the symptoms are going a little insane, becoming really violent, um, sleeping all day, and so it really, you know, that's not really living if you're living like that, and a lot of families will shut out people because um, they thought this was a really horrible thing. So because, you know, it was this crazy disease, a lot of people didn't really know about it, and a lot of people in the United States don't really know about it. So we started hearing about this, and we were like, oh, this is horrible. And then in the video, they talked about how there's actually a cure for this disease. So a lot of people are dying while there's a special kind of medicine called eflornithine that can really help them. And there's eflornithine, they're really hard names, so I'll try to say that. Eflornithine and the mal malarsoprol, I think that's say it. And you know how long it took me to learn trypanosomiasis? Yeah, yeah. so it's actually called trypanosomiasis, but I don't use that it's anymore. Sweet yeah, sweet. it's the music is. So there are two medicines. One was really bad, really was painful, and one of them was really good, but one of these companies was using it for a facial hair removal, removal in the States. So like, you know, women were just using it, and that was more profitable. So they knew they could make money from using this drug for that instead of, you know, giving it to all the people who really needed it and were dying. So imagine being on a rug like this and having a video playing. We saw this whole video. Um, I remember the reporter, her name was Christiana Montfort, and then I did a Women's History Month project about her because I thought she was so cool. And we learned about how all these people were dying. There were, was something that could help them not die. So it's not like a disease that, you know, we don't know how to cure it. There was a cure, and the only thing stopping it was money and someone just putting those two things together. So it's not so easy. It's not like you just give $1,000 and then someone just gets a drug. But it is, you know, really sad to see something where, because people like, need to make money because they're a company, they can't help these people. So we were in your position, and we heard about this, and this was the first time we ever really saw, you know, people on the TV looking really sick, dying of something that could be cured. And that's what we were. Children, right? Yeah, yeah. Kids. I mean, they show a lot of, it affects all ages, but, you know, especially kids, it's really easy to die from this disease if you're not cured. And it's really hard if you know there's a cure. And if anyone in the States had that kind of disease, they would be cured and it would be okay. So that's kind of how we first saw it. Um, and we were just like, let's do something. And the, the name Kids World Health didn't actually come until the year after. But we met with the CEO of the company of that drug, you know, how I said he was making, he was using it for something else. We had little note cards and he was sitting in a chair like this and we were sitting on the ground. We were just asking him like, why can't you donate more? Like, what are you doing to help with this? And so that's how we first got started. And then we started thinking, okay, if this is the situation, let's start to raise money, let's do something. And so I think our class was about 20 people, and then like 14 of us decided to stay with it the next year. So like you guys are doing, giving up one of your, I think like, this is recess or lunch, recess? Yeah, so you know, you could be outside playing, but instead you feel like this is something that you feel really strongly about, and that's amazing. That's like, to be this young and already make a sacrifice like that is really important, and I think it's really, you should be really proud of yourselves that you're just even learning about this is enough, let alone that you guys are raising thousands of dollars so that's, I'll give you just a little, I know that was a lot. Um, and if you want to ask questions, then I can talk about the other thing. Is there any questions about how it felt or the next steps? Because there's been a long time. Yeah. Okay, so when it first started, like, were you very, very involved or were you not really? In what? Way? Like, when you first heard about this, like, they said you could join Kids for Health, were you like, at first, like, no? Or were you like, I really want to, like, Yeah. Well, the thing is, I wasn't really in that situation because I was one of the people who actually formed it. So there were 14 of us, and we decided. So until fourth grade, this was in third grade when we first found out about it, there was no Kids World Health. There was no thing doing it. It was just that we were in class, and we wanted to learn more about it and do something. So then the next year, we thought, okay, let's keep meeting. So Ms. Kobe was still a third grade teacher, and we were all in fourth grade, so she wasn't actually our teacher. But we would go back to our classroom during lunch. And so it wasn't until third grade, fourth grade that we were like, okay, let's make this a, a thing, you know, have other kids come together and start meeting about this. And I think, I'm not sure when our first chapter was, but at the very beginning, like, there were just no chapters. It was just the founders. So there were 14 of us, about your age, exactly your age, um, in fourth grade and then fifth grade, who stayed with it. 
and then we all graduated and went to homics, and then a chapter started, chapter, I think, I'm not sure how the timing works. But so we were part of the ones who made it, so it wasn't really like, let's get involved in this thing that already is. It was like, okay, I think this is really important, let's stay with this. But so that's why, I just want to say, that's why she's called one of the founders, yeah. because she helped found the organization. And then there are founders of chapters, so those people will be, say you're in a school, like we have friends of friends who heard about this, and they might not even be in Larchmont, but they want to help out, so they make their own chapter. And that's kind of how we got to make this spread, instead of just being, you know, just 14 of us, even though that's great, it's hard to really do that much. Instead, we have people like you who are, you know, raising money and talking about these things and also educating. Because every time you do a fundraising event, when you talk to parents, when you talk to your friends, you're telling people about this problem that otherwise people wouldn't know about. Because it's not, it's in, it's been in the news a little. There was a, an article about sleeping sickness a while ago and an article about Chagas, um, but definitely not enough to really help with this problem. So. I think that's what they call it, neglected. <laughs> I can talk about that too. I'm doing some health stuff in college too. So three years of college, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade. Wait, wasn't it 2001 or 2002? Well, 2000. There was the year that we like talked about, it, and then the year it actually became, which was fourth grade. So I don't even know what date that was. I think it was, I think 13 years. I think you're right. Because I was what what grade? Are, how old are you guys? Ten. And you're in fifth grade. Ten or eleven. So I was. Nine. So I was nine when it started, and I'm nine. about to be 21. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and that's why I just wanted to talk about it, because I still remember how it felt. And I remember, actually, in fourth grade, we were sitting in on the rug during a lunch period, and we were talking about how we wanted to make this a nonprofit organization. Do you guys know about those NGOs? So those are groups like what you guys are now part of, where you raise money and you're not trying, you're not company not trying to make your own money. So we were on the carpet, and we, had, we was at the blackboard, and we were writing different names, and I don't even remember other names, but I remember it was like World Health, like Children World Health, or like we were thinking of different names.